Good morning, Valley Middle. Welcome back to another math lesson. It's old dark hundred here at Valley Middle. Let's get started with something fun before we talk about reducing fractions. Our trivia question today: What is the highest-grossing kids movie of all time? And P.S. I was shocked because they adjusted uh, for inflation, but even then, I was still shocked at what it was. See if you can figure it out. Let's get back to our target, which officially for today is 4.4a. I can use common factors to express fractions in simplest form. So let's do this thing. All right, here we go. What is 75 225ths in simplest form? Your question of the day. Even better, how would you go about simplifying this fraction? Well, my first thought is you could divide by 5 because they both have 5 in there. And then I remember that 15 goes into both, so you could divide by 15. Probably the easiest way right off the top of my head is divide by 25. But there is the fastest way so you know what that greatest common factor is. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, using greatest common factors to express those fractions in simplest form and doing that efficiently. Our math word of Rodeo, simplest form is simply a fraction that cannot be reduced any further, like one-half and one-third or twelve-thirteenths. So when the greatest common factor of both the numerator and the denominator is one, you know you're done. Take a look at these two one, uh, examples here. First of all, I had eight-sixteenths, and I know that eight-sixteenths uh, was equivalent to 4 eighths, so I reduced it down to that. But then I realized that's still not in simplest form, so I reduced it again to 1 half. On the bottom, however, I used the greatest common factor between these two numbers, which was 5, and I reduced that to 2 thirds right off the bat, because I just did 10 divided by 5 was 2, 15 divided by 5 is 3. So, slam bam. Thank you, ma'am. But how do you reduce these unfamiliar fractions, Mr. Watson? Hmm. If I had a funny-looking hat, I'd wear it right now, because Watson always wore funny-looking hats. Um, the book actually has a very nice uh, page in it that does a good job of explaining two different methods. First of all, just dividing by common factors. That's what I did in that first example here. I just went ahead and I, I divided right by 2, and then I divided by 4. Look, look what the book did. Um, they said, we've got 6 24ths. So they just started dividing by 2. And I do this a lot of times, too. So they just did 6 divided by 2 was 3. 24 divided by 2 is 12. But they, weren't, they still weren't in simplest form yet. So then they reduced, again, by dividing by 3, the numerator and the denominator. So 3 divided by 3 was 1. 12 divided by 3 was 4. Um, it didn't take long, but it took two steps to get to that simplest form, which is 1 fourth here. Knowing what the greatest common factor is, like down here, where they took and actually factored out, here are all the factors of 6, 1, 2, 3, 6, and here are all the factors of 24, and then looking and seeing that that greatest common factor is actually 6, they were able to reduce in one swift movement here. Look, 6 24 They divided by the greatest common factor, so 6 divided by 6 was 1. 24 divided by 6 was 4. So they got to that 1 fourth in one step. A trick I use is I don't always factor the largest number. I just factor the smaller number. And I would ask myself, does 1 go into 24? Yes, it sure does. Does 2? It does. Does 3 go into 24? Yeah. Does 6 go into 24? Yes. 6 is my greatest common factor. Um, when you get to the end of the line, asking that question on the factors of the smaller number, whichever number is largest will be your greatest common factor. I think it's a little more efficient and a little faster than factoring them out both. But go ahead and do it either way. Uh, all right, let's take a look at a couple of these examples in action. Let's go back to our original example of 75 225 ths You can see I factored them out here. And if you forget how to factor, you can go back and look at that uh, video. I think it was 4.1. You'll see that I, my greatest common factor here is not 25. I even forgot to list 25 here. But it is actually 75. So by reducing, I'm going to just move this guy over here a little bit. By reducing automatically by 75, slide that guy in. Come on, you can do it. There you can. I knew you could. I did it in one step. 75 divided by 75 is 1. 225 divided by 75 is 3. One third. One is my greatest common factor both numerator and denominator, I'm done. So, let's take a look at another example. 30 40 fifths. Well, on this one here, I factored them all out. 
and I found out that 15 was the greatest common factor. So 30 divided by 15 is 2, 45 divided by 15 is 3. So I got 2 thirds. 1 is my greatest common factor with both the numerator and denominator, so I'm done. And I put up here, yeah, but, yeah, but what if you miss a factor? Well, I want you to take a look at this same example. I missed some factors down here. I don't have 15 in here. So I had factor, I, I used 5, which is still a common factor, just not the greatest common factor. So look what happens. You do 30 divided by 5 is 6. 45 divided by 5 is 9. You get into a, a familiar fraction here of 6 ninths. But you know that's not in simplest form because you can still put 3 into both. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 3 is third, 3. So I, I get to my 2 thirds in simplest form. I just had to do it in two steps. Notice again, what's 5 times 3? It's still 15, that, that, that uh, greatest common factor that I missed. So that's an interesting way of looking at it. Um, there's nothing wrong with this. You made a mistake, but as long as you keep evaluating that uh, equivalent fraction to make sure it's in simplest forms, you can't get it wrong. All right? So I usually just jump in someplace, especially with larger numbers that I'm unfamiliar with. I just jump in and start reducing with a common factor. Um, I understand greatest common factor is the most efficient way, but it also takes a lot of time to factor out those larger numbers. Okay? Let's take a look at, uh, uh, have you try a couple of examples on your own. Here you go. Your turn. Express this fraction in the simplest form and go ahead and pause the video. I'm back. Let's see how, let's see how you did. Well, I went 24 divided by 3 and 33 divided by 3 and I got to 8 elevenths. Uh, again, I didn't factor them out that time. I just knew that 3 went into both of them and I started that way. And once it got to 8 elevenths, I realized that 3 is the greatest common factor. So, sweet! All right. Here's another example. Try this one. 1456. Go ahead. All right. Let's see how you did. <clears throat> well, I knew that 7 went into both numbers, so I divided by 7. Unfortunately, that's not the greatest common factor. I got to 2 eighths, and I realized that that ain't the smallest. That's not reduced. So I divided by 2 again, and I got to 1 fourth. If I wanted to go back and fake it, I could because 7 times 2 or 14 will be the greatest common factor. But again, we're more concerned about getting it to the simplest form here and understanding the process here. So as a quick reteaching, divide by a common factor. Make sure you do the same thing to the top and the bottom. That's, these are absolute musts. And then the third must is evaluate your equivalent fraction to see if 1 is the greatest common factor. If not, if there's another number that's still common to the numerator and denominator, you have to continue reducing. All right, nice work. Let's do the ticket to the show. Two problems. Ooh, big numbers, folks. 130, uh, sorry, 34, 136, and 34, 102. Give me a second to write them down. All right. Are you all ready for the uh, answer to the trivia question? See if you're as surprised as I was. All right. The highest grossing kids movie of all time? Well, let's just jump right in. The number one highest grossing movie of all time for kids was Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. At the time, it brought in $185 million, but in today's dollars, it would be $1.3 billion. Okay, I know Snow White, but check out the year, 1937. Hello? That's a long time ago. That's like when Miss Carruthers was a little kid. All right, take a look at this one here. Mary Poppins, 1964. I've actually never even seen this movie. I know I should have, but that's embarrassing. Uh, it brought in $102 million, which would be basically $650 million in today's dollars. So some of the, the two oldest movies. Wait, what's this? The Jungle Book, number three, 1967. That brought in $142 million. Adjusted gross would be... $614 million. So basically, the three highest grossing movies of all time were put out um, almost before I was born. I was actually born at 64, so I was three when this came out, but a long time ago. It wasn't until we got to The Lion King, uh, which is in, in 94, something a little bit more current, 
um, this is, I would have guessed Lion King, I would have guessed Toy Story, but um, the uh, fifth highest grossing movie of all times was 101 Dalmatians, again, uh, from 1961, a very old movie. So, anyway, kind of interesting trivia. Thanks for listening, have a good evening.